Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to do affiliate marketing step by step. Now, what we're going to do today is we are going to cover each one of these seven steps in depth. I'm going to show you examples of really each step, opportunities that are out there. Um, I'm going to forewarn you, this is going to be a longer video, but this is going to be, um, you could use this to as a complete course. So uh, in my opinion, these are the steps. Um, some people may interchange steps one and two, but in my opinion, uh, I think this is the best way to go. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, select a niche or, and I'm going to show you some different ways to find niches relatively easy. We are going to select affiliate programs and notice that I have pro programs, plural, uh, not just one program, but multiple programs. And we'll talk about why that's important. Then the next step is to start email marketing. We'll cover what that is. Pick a platform. Um, in fact, what I'd recommend is pick two platforms, a secondary platform and a primary platform. We'll talk about those two things. Uh, keyword research because it's important to figure out what your customers want to know. Create content, the different types of content to create, and then take a look at our analytics. Now, uh, at the very bottom here, I have Unemployee 7 Day Challenge. I am launching a seven day course. It's a structured course that is going to go into more in depth into each one of these seven steps. It's going to probably be maybe five or six hours worth of training, which goes into great detail. And you can click the link in the description. Um, eventually you'll see that there is a seven day unemployee challenge and we'll talk about what an un unemployee is. And if you want to uh, do something like that. The seven day challenge is going to cost $7. So $1 per day. And there won't be these gigantic upsells. Um, there will be an opportunity to uh, work with me for one-on-one -on -one coaching, but right now that's going to be the only upsell. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, hopefully you are here because you know what affiliate marketing is. You have a foundational understanding of what it is and why uh, people do it. As you know, affiliate marketing is simply recommending or selling other people's products and services. The way that it works is you're going to uh, work with an affiliate program or an affiliate network, and we'll talk about those two things. And you're going to get your unique URL called an affiliate link, and you're going to place that affiliate link strategically and emphasis on strategically in different places on the internet. Now, what I'm saying is you are not going to spam your affiliate links. You're not going to spray and pray as I call it. You are going to provide valuable information. And then when people want more help or more assistance, that's when your affiliate link comes in. So that is what affiliate marketing is step by step. Um, or that, that is the definition I should say of affiliate marketing. Um, with that understanding going forward, let's go ahead and take a look. First thing that we want to do is pick a niche. Now, a niche is just simply an area that you want to create content, an area of focus. Um, successful affiliate marketers will create content or a series of content in specific niches. For example, the largest niches out there are health, wealth, relationships, and technology. But literally anything is a niche. Anything from iPhones to PlayStation to postcards to you know YouTube cameras, YouTube lighting. Just look around your your house, your your apartment. Wherever you are right now, if you're sitting in a coffee shop, all of the different coffees or niche, niche, niches, I should say, um, the tables and everything that, that goes into uh, that, that space that you're at are different niche opportunities. Uh, so let's take a look. Um, niches are, are literally everywhere. And what we can do, if you have no idea where to start, and again, um, I'm going to have a detailed course that's going to go into more in depth about finding and selecting, selecting a niche. Also, there's going to be some homework involved as well, which will help keep you on track. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to amazon.com. And Amazon, as you know, is the largest e-commerce store in the world. It also has an affiliate program, which we'll talk about in just a moment. But if we take a look here, all of these are different niche ideas that you could get into and potentially create content. We've got football, we've got sports, uh, home security cameras, um, uh, storage, as you can see here, all of these are really different opportunities where you could earn a full-time income, whatever your full-time number is in these different sections. And what's really interesting, if we look at this Amazon live, this woman is an affiliate. And if someone clicks on these links and purchases, she could earn a commission. So that's something that you may want to take a look at later on down the line. But if we scroll through, these are all different opportunities where you could create content. Very interesting. We're going to click on this and we're going to come back to this because I'm sure that people are making very good money with these piggy banks. That's basically what they are. Uh, but as you can see, metal money coin bank, we can take a look and see uh, traffic and things of that nature in just a moment. But what we could do is um, there's a few ways to find a niche on Amazon. One way is simply to just go here, click all, look at the different departments. Uh, and so the different departments themselves are going to be top level niches. 
within the different departments, if we click here, these are sub niches. So one easy way, and if we look at pet here, we can get into sub sub niches of pet. Um, so as you can see, we could actually create content in smart pet. Uh, that's actually interesting that we're gonna copy this and we're gonna take a look at that in just a moment too. But you can see there are tons of opportunities. Another thing that I like to recommend and, and suggest is take a look at recent purchases. The reason why you wanna take a look at recent purchases is most likely you've done some research where you had a problem and the product that you purchased was a solution. Now remember, affiliate marketing, if you take nothing else from this video, affiliate marketing is simply connecting a solution to a problem. For example, um, my son is going through his, he's gonna have his third birthday here in a couple weeks, and he's all about the Octonauts right now. So we are having an Octonauts themed birthday party. And so, you know, my wife is going out doing research, trying to find different Octonauts things, and I could be an affiliate for different products for Octonauts or Netflix or Disney, wherever Net, or wherever Octonauts is, is, is played and displayed, <clears throat> excuse me, we could uh, be an affiliate and recommend different products and services because there are millions of people that are also interested in the Octonauts. So just thinking about that. But what you can do is come here or you can use Best Buy or Target, wherever you, you spend a lot of your money, go over to Returns and Orders. Uh, it's just gonna have me log in real quick. Um, and what we can do is we can look at recent purchases. So if we look here, these are all different things that are our solutions. We'll get rid of that. And if we scroll through, if we scroll through long enough, we could find potentially solutions. Uh, this is for, for Christmas. So you could create all sorts of stuff about Christmas. Uh, we just keep, keep scrolling here. You could find probably 300, 400 different solutions for whatever problems that are out there. So this is just one way. Another way to potentially find a niche is to jump over to uh, jump over to YouTube. So we've got recent purchases. We can take a look at uh, different products. You, you can go through different departments over on Amazon. All of these are different niche opportunities. You just look through here and you know these are hundreds of different niches where you could create content. Now we're gonna come back to Amazon later on in this video, but you can see there's just, everything is literally a niche. If you have no idea where to go, you can type in something like random a uh, random niche generator like this. And then it's gonna give you a few ideas, niche idea generator. So we could click on this. And again, it's gonna spit out some opportunities. But what I recommend for your first niche is create it on something that you know and that you're familiar with. You don't have to be passionate about it. You just wanna be familiar with it so that you can uh, start thinking of keywords and start getting ideas and be in the best position to create content because content is ultimately what you're going to need to potentially make money. Uh, so if we go through here, niche generator, let's see if we can find this one. Um, but you know, don't spend a lot of time trying to find the perfect niche because in my opinion, there's no such thing as the perfect niche. Um, there are, I would say trillions of websites out there covering every topic, no demand. Um, but if it can be bought and sold online, you can make money from it. Um, but one, one suggestion, one recommendation that I do have is to niche down or niche down. Um, if you just try and create content about pets, for example, if we see if we can go back here, if we go over to Amazon one more time and you just create content about pets, that's going to be, uh, that's going to be too broad and it's going to be very difficult for you to compete. In fact, what I'll do is I'll show you, um, Ahrefs, it's a keyword research tool that will go back to a few different times, but I, I'm gonna use this to illustrate how competitive um, a very general broad niche is. So I'm just gonna bring this up over here and slide this over just like this. So um, we're gonna go to Keywords Explorer, and uh, this is my favorite keyword research tool. There's tons of them out there, but I like this one personally the best. I find it uh, easiest to use. Um, it's, it's kind of expensive, but you can use it $7 for seven days and you can do all the keyword research that you need and actually download everything that you need um, within the seven days. So I'm just gonna type in pet and you're gonna see that pet is way too competitive and it's way too broad. So if we look at this, matching terms, now that what I'm talking about here is, is niching down. So if we look at this, there are 30 million monthly searches, there are over 2.8 million keywords, but if you look at this, this is way too competitive uh, for a new blog or website and even a YouTube channel if you wanted to create content. A better opportunity, which is still gonna be really competitive and to go back here, uh, so we see 96 out of 100, we could say dog. 
And you're going to see once again, that's less competitive at 93. But if we go over to matching terms here, you're going to see again, a lot of dark orange, a lot of red it means it's really competitive. So if we look at this 118 million monthly searches, 9.6 million keywords, a lot of orange, a lot of red. Now what we could do is we could potentially talk about a different type of dog, like a Doberman Pinscher or a German Shepherd. Now that's going to be a better opportunity because you are talking, talking to a smaller group of people and still a lot of people that are interested in German Shepherds or, you know, whatever Doberman Pinscher, whatever type of, of dog you have. So if we do German, German Shepherd. All right. So I'm just going to copy this like this um here we go we'll go right here and if i paste that in and you're gonna see there's still some red and some yellow and some orange but you're also gonna see more green look at this so uh, this is potentially where you want to start creating content because there is more opportunity when we look at german shepherd 4.3 million monthly searches so there are less monthly searches there are less fewer, fewer keywords but you can see there is more opportunity so this is what i talk about when it comes to niching down uh looking at another example if we looked at amazon um, if we go here to uh, the departments, these are all top level niches, electronics, but then within the electronics, we have uh, TV, we have home audio and theater, uh, camera, phone, and video. So you, what you'd want to do is maybe pick headphones within the electronics. And what you can always do is you can always niche up. Once you start building something called domain authority or channel authority, where you start ranking for competitive or not so competitive keywords, you can always move back up. So instead of just talking about headphones, you can talk about other types of niches or even move up to home audio and theater. Um, so that is a little bit about picking a niche um, and even that you know. What I recommend is don't spend a ton of time on this just simply because, um, as I mentioned, everything's going to be... Um, there's no like uncovered niche. Okay. There are niches that are probably less saturated. For example, if you went back a year ago and you started creating content on Shiba Inu coin, that would be not so competitive. Now it's really competitive versus the number of people searching for it. If you can be on the cusp of things that are trending, that's going to give you a better opportunity to find stuff that's um, not competitive, but you also run the risk of uh, creating content about stuff that's not going to be important in three or four years. For example, if we go over to Google Trends, and Google Trends can be a good way to find different niches and even check how um, to check if they're trending or not. Obviously, Google Trends. But if we type in like Shiba S H I is it Shiba Inu like this Shiba Inu coin like this, and we take a look, it was hot um about two or three months ago and since it's fallen off so if you were to this is the pros and cons of creating content on things that are trending sure you jump on in the beginning here and you ride this wave it goes up but now it's it's kind of going down and, and not so important and then you're kind of going back to the drawing board so here what you could do is let's say your niche was cryptocurrency your crypto you could focus on shiba in you while it's while it's trending and it's important it's interesting that these actually dip a little bit um, and it was relevant back here in 2018 uh, or 2008. But, um, you know, you notice that people are talking about Shiba Inu. You create content here, but then be prepared to jump on to the next uh, meme coin, you know, Dogecoin. You can start talking about some of those other things, as you can see here. Um, and so on. that's a, a pretty in-depth topic or talk about about picking a niche. Don't spend a ton of time on it again in my course. I'm going to give you some more t tips on, on picking a niche. Um, definitely check that out if you're interested. The next thing that you want to do is select affiliate programs, plural. Okay. Now, affiliate programs is a, a pretty uh, hot topic. Okay. When it comes to affiliate programs, there are, in general, there are two main types. There's something called low ticket affiliate programs and high ticket affiliate program. A low ticket affiliate program is a program that you will earn a commission of $100 or less. A high ticket affiliate program is where you earn a commission of $100 or more. Now, some people will tell you that you only should promote high ticket affiliate programs. Some people will tell you that you should only promote 
reoccurring affiliate programs. Reoccurring affiliate programs are programs that are going to pay you every single month as long as the customer stays a customer of the company that you're an affiliate for. Uh, for example, ClickFunnels has a reoccurring affiliate program. Um, GetResponse has an affiliate program that's reoccurring. And so some people are only going to are going to say only promote reoccurring or only promote low ticket or only promote high ticket. In my opinion, you should have a mix of high ticket and low ticket. But more importantly, you should have five or six different affiliate programs that you can promote to your customer. The reason why I think this is important is so that you can make more money with the same group of people. And I'm going to give you a few examples here in just a moment. Let's say your niche is in YouTube. You want to help people start a YouTube channel. And when you think about it, you have to think about all of the things that someone may need for starting a YouTube channel. Uh, they're probably going to want a keyword research tool so that you can promote TubeBuddy. They're probably going to want lighting. They're probably going to want a video camera. Um, they're also going to need a microphone. They will also need probably, I would recommend that they get a website. Um, they probably would also need some video editing software. Um, they also would probably want a different, uh, different ways to make money online. So maybe you saw like an MMO course, just like that. Um, so if we look at that, there's already two, four, six, seven different ways that you can make more money with the same customer. And if you look, they probably have, most of these are probably low ticket. We could also do email marketing like that. And also, um, we could do either we have, we have video editing. We should do like photo editing or freelancer. So as you can see here, we have a bunch of ways that we can make money by helping people start a YouTube channel. Now, if we look at this and we do this enough times and we do it successfully and we do it the right way, we could make a full-time income providing these, uh, promoting these different things to a smaller group of customers. The trade-off between high ticket and low ticket is this. With high ticket, you're probably going to have more customers. You're gonna need more people interested in the product. With low ticket, you are your, your conversion rates may be higher, um, but each sale is gonna be potentially much lower. For example, with this video camera, you're probably gonna make 3% commission with, with the lighting, this stuff here. With Bluehost, you'd make a hundred dollar commission, um, and so on. But you know, but you can look at this, and the reason why this works, you know, you can promote all of these different products. Is the person that's starting a YouTube channel needs this stuff? Everything that I'm talking to you about right now for my YouTube channel, I need um, in order to be successful. And so, what I recommend that you do is make a list of everything that a customer may need for uh, for your niche. If you're in the dog niche, um, you can promote maybe dog food, dog toys, you know, training. There's a training over on ClickFunnel, ClickBank that's really popular. If you make a list of all of the different things that they need, that your customer needs, you can go out and find different affiliate programs and make even more money. So you don't need to have 10,000 customers to make $10,000. If you have thought through and figured out exactly what your customers need, want, and need, actually, all right. So, um, but yeah, and and let's talk about all of the different ways that you can find affiliate programs in just a moment. So, uh, finding affiliate programs are really, really easy. What you can do is you can come up to Google and type in in quotes "dog training affiliate." Oops affiliate program like that and you can see there are people that have put together a list of 10 best dog training affiliate programs to join in 2022 you can go through here and this is an easy way another thing that you can do is you can go to a website for example we're going to go to bestbuy.com you can use any website, Amazon, Best Buy, but what we're going to do is we go to a website and usually scroll all the way down to the bottom and look for the word affiliate. So it says affiliate program. Uh, what I also like to do 
is uh, I'll do like control find and type in affiliate and usually that'll take us right to it for Amazon we can type in like control find affiliate once again as you can see become an affiliate and if you want to become an affiliate for Amazon you simply click here that's going to take you over to Amazon Associates which is the affiliate network uh, the affiliate wing of amazon.com and so basically what you'll do here and I gotta sign out here what you would want to do is you'd want to just apply and for Amazon every affiliate program has different rules Amazon you're gonna get a conditional approval until you meet the the required sales okay another thing that you can do is you can find different affiliate networks now affiliate networks are different than affiliate programs for example um, cj.com is an affiliate network an affiliate network is a third party that works with affiliate programs and affiliate marketers the affiliate network is responsible for sending out payments providing affiliate links and uh, providing marketing materials the interesting thing with affiliate networks is most of them are free to join but then you have to go in and apply to individual affiliate programs so if we look in cj.com you're going to see there are thousands of different affiliate programs. And that's the other thing with affiliate marketing. There's thousands of affiliate programs out there. Most people only focus on the top two or three. Um, in my course, I'll have a list of the different affiliate programs, affiliate networks that you could um, look at. But you can see here, there are ton tons of affiliate networks. Uh, one password, if you are uh, promoting anything uh, hardware or even software related what you can do is come up here and just type in the keyword pet if our niche is pet or dog training just type in pet here and you can see there are all sorts of stuff that pops up and you could be an affiliate now the <clears throat> the only drawback to using an affiliate network is you will have to apply to individual affiliate programs so you'll apply to cj.com which is free to get started but then inside of it you have to apply to Alpha Paw Pets, for example. Sometimes you're accepted, sometimes you're not accepted. What you can do, and again, I'll make a list here. Um, I'll have like affiliate network. One of the biggest ones are Impact Radius, um, CJ.com, Share a Sale. There's a ton of them out there. ClickBank, a lot of people refer to over on YouTube. Um, but there's just a ton of them out there. And some of these have really big names. I'm sure you've heard of, um, I just lost a 1-800-GET-JUNK. I'm sure you've heard of that before. But if you look at these, these are all big names and they're all going to pay a decent amount of money. Now let's actually click on one of these because I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the intricacies of affiliate marketing. Now if we take a look here, we're going to click on program terms. Under program terms, we see something called a referral period. The referral period is the length of time that the affiliate has to earn a commission when a customer clicks on their affiliate link. It's also called the cookie window. So what happens is you put your affiliate link, let's say in a YouTube video. Someone clicks on that link and then a little piece of tracking code called a cookie is placed on that web browser. And that web browser will expire after a certain amount of time for this one. For this affiliate program it's 45 days so the affiliate has 45 days or and this is a big or or if they click on another affiliate or if they click on a, an, an affiliate someone else's affiliate link so let's say we're both promoting OYO hotels and they click on my link so I have 45 days from when they clicked on the link let's say they watch another YouTube video and another YouTuber is promoting the same affiliate program, they click on their affiliate link, my link expires, okay? And that's no good for me, but uh, the new affiliate marketer has 45 days or until they make a purchase. Now, the other thing that we wanna take a look at is the commission. Now, commissions are either paid out uh, a percent or they're paid out a set or fixed amount. This one is 12%. Now. The way that it happens can vary. It can either be based on, um, it can be based on, it can be based on the total cart. So let's say over on Amazon, I spend a thousand dollars. I could pay get paid three percent of a thousand dollars, or it can be based on you know a single product. 
So you might want to take a look at that and figure out exactly um, you want to make sure that you re are reading the program terms so that you understand exactly what how much you're making okay so uh, let's see get rid of that all right so that is a brief overview but there are tons of affiliate programs out there that are designed to help you make money um, so we looked at a couple of them we you know we went over to the a website Best Buy for example and then we just did control find and we typed in affiliate we can go to a affiliate network and type in our niche and then take a look at all the different options and then we can also just search dog uh, training affiliate programs but in my opinion what's most important is that you make a list of affiliate programs make a list of everything that your target audience needs and what you should do and what you can do is promote them one after another and the best way to do that is with email marketing that's why I have it listed at number three now email marketing really consists of a few different things one is a landing page that's going to capture email addresses one a lead magnet that is what you are going to give to your target audience or your customer in exchange for their email address then an autoresponder autoresponder and then finally we have a broadcast cast email okay and so let's go ahead and talk about each one of those things and what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to look up a online whiteboard the reason being online whiteboard is this hopefully will help us illustrate how email marketing works uh, let's see if I can find it, I should have clicked on the tutorials point one because I know that one works. Sometimes these don't work properly. All right, so what do we got here? It looks like, it looks like this one's going to work. Let's see. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and just draw out how all of this should work. What you're going to do is you're going to create content and I'm just going to uh, I'm going to put YT here. It can be um, TikTok. It can be Instagram, IG, just like this. Um, it could be a blog. So we'll put blog BL. Um, it could be Facebook, Facebook group, Facebook Messenger. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a few more, but you know you're going to create content. So I'm just going to put content, content up top here. And what you're going to do, and this is really the difference between successful and unsuccessful affiliate marketers. Successful affiliate marketers will send people to a landing page where they'll collect their email. This landing page, so we're just going to draw an arrow like this. This landing page is going to touch on a pain point that was discussed in the content. For example, if someone wants to lose weight, uh, we could put something like new book reveals. Um, what the gurus don't want you to know about losing weight okay and so we can have a headline a sub headline and then we have this little box here this little box here and then a submit button okay so the box here is going to collect their name this is going to be their email so I'm just going to put at there um, at like that and then this is going to be submit so sub and so the purpose of a landing page is for them to either enter in their email address or to leave the page, um, nothing else. And so, as you can see here, the purpose here is for them to enter their email address so that they can get this free guide. What happens is when people enter in their email address, I'm just going to put a little arrow here, they are going to go to our email list. Okay, this is our list. List. They have opted in to our list okay and so once they click submit they are going to be taken to another window now two things can happen here depending on the type of product that you're promoting 
This can either be directly to an affiliate offer. So um, I'm going to put affiliate offer or bridge page, bridge page. Now I've done both. And I, it, depending on the type of content that you create will really, really depend on how you send people. If you are on camera, so if you're doing TikTok or YouTube or IG when you're on camera or, you know, a Facebook group, you want to send people to a bridge page. Um, so I'm just going to draw like a little draw bridge here. Whenever I draw this bridge, I think of Shrek when he is crossing over with Donkey. Anyway, uh, the purpose of this draw bridge is you are introducing the product owner. And so what you can do here is you can do a little video where you are talking about the product owner and the product itself. And so what you're going to do here is you're going to spend a couple minutes just talking about the product. Hey, uh, thank you for submitting your name and email address. Obviously, we won't spam you, but let me introduce you to a guy by the name of Frank. Frank is a person that has helped me tremendously, you know, just kind of talk about the product and the person that they're going to see on the next page. And what we're going to put here, where's my, here we go. So, and then what we're going to put here is an affiliate, affiliate link. And so if someone clicks on this affiliate link, they're going to go to the next page, which is the sales page of the product owner. And so um, put an arrow here like this. And usually I'm going to put money page here because if people click here, they're going to buy and you're going to make money. Usually this sales page here as a video sales letter, which is most common. And then they have a button, maybe they have additional bonuses. Um, and speaking of bonuses, one way as an affiliate to set yourself apart from other affiliates is to offer exclusive bonuses. What you can do on this page is say, since you entered in your name and email, I'm, and, and if you get started today, I'm gonna give you something that no one else is giving depending on the the bonus depending on the affiliate product you want to make sure that the the bonus is congruent or in line uh, you don't want to be promoting web hosting and then offer a bonus of a basket weaving if you are promoting web hosting you want to help people start a blog or website maybe your bonus is a free training to show them step by step how to get started with bluehost um, or or maybe you offer to put together their website for them anyway um, they click on your affiliate link and it goes to the sales page. And if they click and buy, you make money. Most often, probably 90% of the time, people don't buy right away. And that's why you want to send people emails. And so what we're going to do is we're going to send them emails every day or every other day, reminding them of the opportunity. So what you can do is send an email sequence. And this is where the autoresponder comes in. We send them emails automatically reminding them, hey, you signed up for this mailing list. You want to learn more about starting a website. Okay. And so you send them these emails and, you know, maybe they buy, maybe they don't buy. The cool thing and the reason why you want to do email marketing, let's see if we can change the color here, is let's say after four emails, they decide not to buy. They don't want web hosting through Bluehost. They don't want whatever it is that you're recommending. What you can do is you can start a new email sequence and you recommend something else. And you can send this to them regardless if they buy or not. The cool thing with email marketing is that you can email them forever until they opt out or they buy or whatever it may be. But that's why you want to put together a list of 10 or 15 or even just five different affiliate programs so that you can have the sequence set up for days, weeks, and months. Now, what I recommend that you do is set up multiple email lists. Set up a buyer's list, set up a non-buyer's list. So let's say, let's say uh, someone clicks here and, and, and makes a purchase. If they buy, I'm just gonna put the money sign here. Um, if they buy, send them to a new list because these people trust you enough to purchase. And then you can sell them different stuff or you can offer coaching or something along those lines. You can offer them more assistance and you can make potentially even more money. So it's just that. All right. So um, that's the really cool thing with email marketing. 
Now these are all autoresponder emails and they're set up beforehand and you can even set them up a day or two beforehand. And then we also have, we also have what's called broadcast emails. These broadcast emails are one-off emails that you send. Let's change the color to green maybe. These broadcast emails are emails that you send one off. Uh, so we'll go like this. And you're going to send them when you come up with a new piece of content. If you have a new YouTube video, you can send them an email saying, hey, look, I just uploaded a new YouTube video. Maybe you want to send people to your TikTok account and you want to grow TikTok. You can send people there. Maybe you have a new blog post. You can send people there. And uh, broadcast emails are one-off emails that you send when you have new information, maybe there's a Christmas sale or whatever it may be, you send an email out to your group and say, hey, look, um, there's a President's Day sale on, on web hosting. Uh, get it now before it goes out of business. And what you can do, what you can do to help you with email marketing is to take a look at the website of, of the product that you're recommending. For example, if we use Bluehost or web hosting, Bluehost like this, uh, bluehost.com. We can take a look at this website and figure out what's important. Now we're going to use this. We're going to come back to this a few different times because I'm going to use this to show you how to create content or find different content ideas to create. And so what you can do is just scroll through and find things that are important to, to Bluehost. Uh, grab a plot of land and start building. What we could do is um, you, we could send an email that says, have you started building on your land yet? Or have you purchased your land yet? And the reason why you want to do this is a Bluehost has spent a bunch of money on copywriting. And so they figured out what works and what doesn't work. And this also helps with something called congruency. And basically congruency is just making sure that what people are seeing in one place, they're seeing it in multiple places and it makes them feel more comfortable to buy. Um, we could say, um, let's see, our new builder makes WordPress website creation easy and fun. Um, we could say, you know, no more boring websites or, you know, build your first website in 20 minutes or whatever it may be. And then you just constantly remind them of, of their opportunity, why they clicked on your affiliate link or clicked on your, your landing page and entered in their email. But you can see, uh, this is how email marketing works. Now, the cool thing with email marketing is you can set all of this up beforehand and then you can just add on to the end of your autoresponder as you get more information as you find different affiliate programs uh, this can go on forever now in my course i am going to have uh, a step-by-step -step instruction to show you how to get started with with get response how to show you uh, show you how to get started with with aweber and then how to get started with click funnels as well um, that will be all be included in the course of course you can use other things if you want but um, I like I like GetResponse and I like Aweber because they're free for the first 500 customers. I like ClickFunnels because you can actually build web pages really really fast. Um, so that is that for for that. All right. So we talked about email marketing. Oh, let's talk about lead magnet. Lead magnet, as I mentioned, is something anything that you are willing to exchange for their email address. Oftentimes, people are going to give away a checklist an ebook, a short ebook, uh, a training, a guide, something that that your target audience finds of value. Again, it has to be congruent or in line with what your target audience wants and needs. If they are interested in starting a website or starting a blog, you may want to give them a guide on how to get more traffic or how to do keyword research. Um, it would not make sense for you to give them a guide that, that they don't care about. Um, to, to give them a guide about uh, basket weaving. That's not going to be of interest to them. But if you get them something that is congruent or in line with their wants and needs, that can help you uh, increase your conversions. One thing that you can do is you can go out and buy PLR or private label rights products and you can give those away. Um, for example, if we type in PLR, um, there's a website out there, I think it's called like Quality PLR. Uh, buy quality PLR and then find something that's related to your niche. If you are in, let's type in blog. Let's see if they have something for blog. There's also free PLR out there as well. Uh, but this can actually help you save time with, with um, content creation. So if you look at this, 
101 blog post title templates that get attention PLR report. So if they want to start a new blog or website, this is definitely something that they're going to be interested in. Um, we could do the same thing for YouTube. We had an example with YouTube, I think. And once again, we can find something that's relevant and potentially give it away. Uh, let's see. YouTube content idea, five ways to build your authority. Uh, YouTube business made easy ebook and video training. So we could give that away. Only $9. But um, if you don't, if you can't come up with an idea or you don't want to create content to come up with an idea, you can always use uh, PLR, buy it and then uh, give it away for free. Now, what I recommend that you do, if we go back over to our whiteboard animation here, what I recommend that you do is give the PLR away here in your first email. Don't give it away here because then they'll never have a reason to go down here. What you can do is you can say, um, thanks for subscribing your ebook ebook is on its way or check your email for your ebook and that way um, that'll increase your open rates and then you can get people to buy one other thing that I uh, did not mention is most people in, in my experience will buy between sometime between the seventh and twelfth email so basically what that means is they will see this email message maybe they'll open up one or two of these but usually so if we go one two three four five six seven Usually, if they are going to buy, they start buying here and, you know, between 7 and 12. So, uh, make sure that your email sequence is at least 12 emails long um, for any given product. And again, if they buy, you can send them to a different list. And then just think about making sure that your your emails at least, or your email autoresponders at least 12, uh, 12 emails long. But in my experience, people start buying right here. Oftentimes we stop emailing here because no one's buying and we miss out on an opportunity. Uh, but if you set up your autoresponder ahead of time, you don't even have to worry and or think about it. So let us mosey on down the road here. The next thing that you wanna do is pick a platform. In my opinion, there are two types of platforms. There is a primary platform, primary, and there is secondary, okay? Now a primary platform, in my opinion, is a platform where you can create long form content. So we're thinking about YouTube, um, blogging, or, you know, having a website are, in my opinion, two primary platforms. You can also look at podcasts. Podcasts can be an hour long. In my opinion, I think having a primary platform is really important because secondary platforms change so much frequently. If we think about a secondary platform like TikTok, YouTube Shorts, Instagram, Facebook, Facebook groups, Facebook reels, those algorithms change so fast. But for the most part, with primary platforms like blogging and, and YouTube or, you know, video marketing, those algorithms are a little bit more mature. And so there isn't a lot of change. Uh, usually people are coming to a primary platform to search because they have a problem. Uh, secondary platforms like TikTok, uh, Instagram reels, YouTube reels, um, they're just kind of random and they're not necessarily looking for a solution. One of the benefits of starting a blog and a YouTube channel is people are actively looking for a solution and you're going to create that solution uh, based on, you know, their problems and their niche. But in my opinion, you should use, you should start with one primary platform, one secondary platform. Uh, Pinterest is a good one. Uh, Facebook reels, Facebook groups, all sorts of them out there. Uh, but what I like to do and I've tested both ways and, and have had success both ways is I will, I will create content on my primary platform, whether it's a YouTube channel or blog or website, I'll create content on my secondary channel or secondary platform that supports my primary platform. And I'll send people back to my uh, primary platform for my secondary platform. For, from example, for example, um, I used to answer questions on Quora and instead of trying to sell people on Quora, I'd send them back to my YouTube channel or I'd send them back to my blog or website. With uh, with my TikTok account, I've tried both selling people directly from my my um, my link, which does work. I also have success bringing people over from YouTube. So either one uh, can work. I recommend that you pick one, actually test them, see which one works best for you. Some have a lot of success just selling directly from, from TikTok. The other issue too with short format or, or, or secondary platforms is they can come and go. Um, for example, like Vine used to be really popular and big and has since gone. And because 
it changes so much and it can be gone. Um, TikTok was at risk of being deleted uh, a few months and years ago. That's why you always want to have a secondary or a primary platform to fall back on. Uh, the next one, and this is going to be really important, is keyword research. You're going to do your keyword research based on your primary platform. The way people ask questions on on YouTube are different than the way that they ask questions on your blog, which are different than the way that they ask questions on TikTok. And so let's talk about some of the different um, different keyword research opportunities. And this is kind of the fun part. One easy way to do keyword research is to go over to a website that you know that you're that you're familiar with. So we could type in. Uh, I think last week I talked about like 75 gallon, 75 gallon fish tank. Okay. So one way to do keyword research, and I think this might be the fastest way, is to type in a keyword from your niche. So if our niche is fish or fish tank, uh, 75 gallon fish tank is, is a keyword. And what we can do is we can go to page four or five. So I've just skipped through a lot of these. Um, in fact, what we could do is let's take a look at, let's take a look at a couple of these. I'm going to open up this one. I'm going to open up this one. And what we can do is we can take the domain name from the the channels that we're looking at. Now this is probably a, a smaller blog and an individual. We can copy the link address and we're going to go over to Ahrefs and we're going to go to Site Explorer. And then we are going to simply paste this in, hit enter, and now we can see what they rank for. Now the cool thing with this is it gives us idea of traffic value, um, uh, so how much money they're potentially making, keywords that they rank for, so 19,000 keywords. And you can see everything that this site ranks for. And then we can change the keyword difficulty to 10 or less. So a new blog or website should have a, a decent enough time to start ranking. But if we look at this, they're creating content about 20, 30, 50, and 10 gallon fish tanks. And we could potentially create that same type of content too. Also, they have a few keywords that have zero competition. So we could create content here. Uh, but this is just one way to do keyword research. Another way to do keyword research, which is a little bit more difficult, is to go up to our search bar here let's go back here so I've typed in 75 gallon fish tank and what we can do is go through each letter of the alphabet this is called the alphabet soup method and we can just write down all of the different keywords that pop up and so you can see that it is popping up all sorts of stuff you just go through each letter of the alphabet and so on another thing you can do is take a look at people also ask so if we look at this they're asking questions that might not have a good answer or, you know, the le next logical step. And we can go through and take a look and see if it's worth creating that type of content. We can also scroll down to the bottom and look at the related searches and potentially create content here. Another opportunity is to use a website called Answer the Public. So I'm just going to copy 75 gallon fish tank, copy this and go to answer the public. Dot com like this. Now, IntoThePublic.com is a search aggregate where it's collecting search results from all over the internet. And if we just paste in 75 gallon fish tank, the only drawback to Into the Public is it limits you to two searches per day, unless you use a VPN. What you can see here, 75 gallon fish tank, eventually it'll come back with some answers. As you can see here, we'll switch it over to data. And you can see people are asking all sorts of questions about 75 gallon fish tank. We can click download CSV and then just check manually to see if, if people are searching it. And so this is a, a decent way. Now you have to remember millions of people know this trick. And so it might be competitive just to stop here. Um, that's why I like doing the other way with, with Ahrefs. I also like doing the manual search with Google. Not everything that shows up in Google shows up in here. Uh, I can assure you there's more than 80 questions about 75 gallon fish tank. Another thing that you can do is if we go back over to, um, we can go to Keywords Explorer here, and then we can just paste in 
75 gallon fish tank, hit enter, and we can take a look. So as you can see, 962 keywords, 39,000 searches per month, all sorts of stuff about different fish tanks. And what we can do is click export over here, and then we can export all. And this is included with the $7 seven day method. And it actually gives us a CSV that we can go through and manually check. That'll pop up in just a second, but you can see, boom, just like that, that pops up. So um, another thing that we can do for keyword research, and I left this up on purpose, is we can go through and we can find keywords based on what the website's telling us is important. And we want to look at the words that are bolded. For example, shared hosting is important. Web hosting is important. Website builder, WordPress. These are all words that are important to the product and the product owner. And so we can try and find keywords based on that. So we could go to like, we can copy this, go back over to Ahrefs and paste in shared hosting. Hit enter and see what pops up. But what you can do is you can scroll through and this is going to help you with keyword research because these are all keywords, um, professional website. These are all keywords that are important and can help you increase conversions. Uh, everything your website needs from startup to success. Grab a plot of land and start building. That's interesting. Um, what I'd also recommend that you do is jot down keywords that are important. Again, uh, website, WordPress. You can see the same word keep popping up. Uh, website templates, website again, um, design, web design, build your brand. These are all things that are important and that could help you make money. So if we go back over here, shared hosting, you can see there are 12,000 searches per month, really competitive shared hosting versus VPS. Now we're going to talk about content creation in just a moment, but this should really help you find keywords. We've looked at a few different ways. Um, we've looked at things that are bolded on the website. We've looked at competitors. We've looked at Ahrefs. So let's get rid of that. Um, we've looked at Ahrefs. We've done manual searching. Another thing that we could do too is we could simply take the name of the website. So bluehost.com in which we're an affiliate for and we could paste it right into Site Explorer. Paste that in just like that. Hit enter. And eventually we'll be able to take a look at the organic keywords there and see um, and see you know what they're ranking for we can look at that and we could potentially create content there so now that we have got an idea about keyword research the next step is to simply create content now there are different types of content to create oops and let's go ahead and list those so we can create questions like how to we can create comparison so uh, x for x um, versus Y. We can create, um, actually, let's do this. We're going to hit enter there and we're going to create um, best X for Y. And then we can type in reviews. And so this is really uh, the pyramid, the inverted pyramid of content creation. At the top here, we have very broad terms. And then as we matriculate through, we have actually, I should put that under keyword research. So let's copy this. Uh, cut, or delete this, um, and we'll paste that here, like that. And so uh, let's go back up to our whiteboard and I can show you better. Um, so this is an inverted pyramid of content creation. And the way that this works is at the very top here, we have people, all right? People are happy. Okay. And so just imagine each one of these people represents, let's say, let's say a million people. Okay. And you get the idea. These people come in and they're happy until something changes in their life that makes them unhappy. Um, maybe they realize that they need a website. Maybe they want to lose weight. Maybe they want to make more money. And then that's when they enter in this inverted pyramid of, of content. Think about yourself. When you realize that you wanted to make money online, you came here and you typed in like how, 
okay? You typed in something like how to make money online and you ran into maybe a list of 10 ways to make money online. Uh, or you, you typed in something like, can you make money online? You typed in a very general question, much like these millions or billions of people. And so what happens is uh, we start off, let's say we have five people, right? So say like we have five people and what happens is four of them decide, I'm just gonna draw circles here. Four, four of them decide that they're going to continue their search. One person decided that they're not gonna continue their search, so they're out of it, okay? So the next step in our inverted pyramid is uh, best X for Y. And so if we go back over here, somebody probably typed in best way to make money online for working moms, best way or, you know, best way to make money online for contractors. And to verify that, we can come up here and we can type in best way to make money online as a teenager uh, without investment as a 14 year old. Uh, we could say like stay at home mom. And you're going to see there are millions of people that have asked that question. And so you can see people are asking this question, but it could be for like construction workers or whatever it is. It doesn't just have to be stay at home moms. So people are like best X for Y. And that's what I have over here. Best X for Y because they're asking about their individual situation. And so what happens is once again, we have people that continue on with their journey and then we have a person that leaves. And oh, by the way, down here at the very bottom, I'm going to just put money because, and this will make more sense in just a second. Come on. All right, so we're just gonna put money down here like this. And then I'm gonna put an arrow from here, from here. Uh-oh, I'm frozen now. So while that's working, there we go. So um, what happens is some people will exit the search because maybe they think making money online is a scam, it's too hard. Uh, maybe they, you know, maybe they've had a change of heart or, you know, their kids started crying and they had to stop searching, whatever it may be. But some people will realize that the information that they're receiving is valuable and they come down here and they either enter in your landing page or they buy or what have you. So that's why we have those dollar signs. If we come back over here, we can do X versus Y. And if we think about making money online, people are looking up maybe drop shipping versus affiliate marketing. They want to know which one is right for them, which one makes the most sense. You can give pros and cons and then maybe sell a course. So once again, we have here and here. So again, people entering and leaving. And then the final one is review. So uh, this is where a lot of people start creating content. This is also where it's most competitive. So maybe they're doing like Bluehost review. Um, and if we go up here, you're going to see that a lot of people create content about reviews because it's closer to the money. But again, you could potentially make money at every level. Bluehost review. Um, and again, we're, we might have a person here who doesn't buy. They go th all the way through this process and they don't buy. Um, or, you know, people exit or whatever. Um, and you can also do the same thing for individual products. So instead of just like how to make money online, we could do something like how to, uh, let's go to Bluehost. So we'll do like how to underscore Bluehost. So like how to, how to start, how to make a website with Bluehost. So as you can see, how to renew Bluehost hosting, how to use Bluehost for blogging, how to questions. If we go back over here, we could, I'm just going to slide these over. Um, we could go to. Um, maybe best, best web hosting. We could say best blue host hosting for, and this could be for small business for entrepreneurs. Uh, Bluehost has different hosting plans. So that's why that makes sense. We could also do like uh, Bluehost versus. So I'm just going to type in Bluehost versus and see what pops up. Bluehost. This is going to be usually Bluehost versus HostGator or, or something like that, but we could do Bluehost shared hosting hosting versus dedicated or some of the other types that they have, managed hosting, whatever it may be. But you can see 
people are talking about that. And then of course you can do Bluehost reviews. These are all different ways that you can create content and potentially make money. Now again, most people will get stuck at creating reviews, but if we type in like uh, best web hosting for, you can see people are looking up best web hosting for bloggers. If we click on this, you're gonna see uh, this top result, 2,000 views from seven months ago, only 3,000 subscribers. 1,000 views uh, from nine months ago, but people are asking this question, best web hosting for affiliate marketers. Now I've created a video on this, affiliate marketing. I think I've created a couple of videos on this. Best web hosting for affiliate marketing. If we scroll down, maybe I'm not on here. There we go, I'm right here. Seven best web hosts for affiliate marketing. Uh, but you can see people are asking these questions in different ways in different um different ways so one thing that you have to realize is that most people are asking the same question they're just asking it in different ways um and they're all asking it about their individual situation uh, that's something to remember as well uh the final thing and i do want to remind you i know i've said this a few different times i do have the seven day challenge it's going to go into depth more depth believe it or not with each of these seven steps these seven steps are uh, in my opinion, the only thing you really need to get up and running with affiliate marketing, um, I will have other training for traffic strategies, traffic strategies with Quora and uh, YouTube. I actually have a complete YouTube masterclass is what I'm calling it. In that masterclass, I think I'm going to include a YouTube automation, which is a hot topic now over on YouTube, of course. I also talk about traffic strategies for TikTok, Pinterest, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Quora, just about all of them. The final thing that you want to pay attention to are your analytics. Now, the reason why your analytics are important is they're going to tell you where your strengths and weaknesses are. And rinse and repeat. Repeat. Okay. And they say numbers never lie. But it's important to understand your analytics because it's really going to be your your friends post it's going to tell you what you should do more of and what you should do less of um, analytics you want to look at your click-through rate your time on page and and these these numbers believe it or not are the same for everything uh, because be, because we're basically ran by um we're, we're ran by bots we're, we're ran by the algorithm the algorithms are all built the same they're just applied differently for example um, click-through rate is going to be the same for blogging and YouTube. But you want to have a high click-through rate because if people aren't clicking through, they're they're not going to um, they're not going to read or watch your content, and the algorithm isn't going to promote your content as much. You want to have a long view duration. If you the longer your view duration, the more your content is going to be pushed out to other people. This is the exact same for blogging, for TikTok, for YouTube, for YouTube Shorts. Um, you want to have a high watch time. You want to, you want people to click through and watch or read multiple videos. You want them to engage with your content. Um, and I, I've said this before, but the algorithms are really based on human emotion. Now you may be asking, how is that possible considering that algorithms are, you know, mechanical, they're a series of zeros and ones, but human emotion is expressed in likes, comments, shares, and dislikes. If you can do that, if you can get people to comment, like, share, dislike, that is the expression, that is the human emotion that signals to the algorithm that this is a good piece of content. Now, let me rephrase good piece of content because good piece of content doesn't mean that the content's good. It means that people have engaged with the content. For example, one of my earliest videos has over 50% downvotes over on YouTube, but it YouTube keeps showing it. That video has been viewed over 150,000 times because people are engaging with it. YouTube doesn't care if the content is good or bad. YouTube cares about people engaging with the content. So that's very important to realize and remember. And the final thing that you want to do is you want to rinse and repeat. You want to continue following this process. Um, you want to follow starting at steps, um, I would say five through seven forever until you are as successful as you want to be of course you can also hire this out to people but uh, once you are start making some passive income you'll probably want to keep your hands on it until you are absolutely confident that someone else can do this 
So if you're still with me, I'm interested to hear what you think about this process. Once again, you are going to select a niche. That's just an area of content, area of focus. Next, you're going to select affiliate programs. I recommend selecting five affiliate products that you can promote. Um, for example, if we look at this, most likely most of these products are going to be available over on Amazon. There are other products as well. Next, you want to start email marketing. Email marketing is going to be how you make most of your money. In my opinion, 90% of my sales have come from follow-up sequence. And an email marketing consists of a landing page, lead magnet, autoresponder, or broadcast emails. Next, you want to pick a niche or pick a platform, excuse me. Platforms are either primary or secondary. Primary platforms have longevity. Secondary platforms are for a good short burst of, of, um, of, of trending topics. And, and what I like to do, you might be different, is push your um, people that you pick up from your secondary pro content, push them back to your primary to help you make money. Next is keyword research. That's simply figuring out what your customers want to know. And there's a number of ways to do keyword research. After that, you're going to create content based on the keyword research. These are the different types of content uh, that you can create. How to best X for Y, X versus Y. Um, you can also do best under. That's another one that I like. Best X under Y. For example, we can come back over to YouTube and we can say best camera under thousand dollars you're gonna see a lot of people look that up because they know that they need a camera they just have a budget of a thousand dollars top result here 16,000 views 135,000 subscribers you can see people are looking this up all day all night and you can make money with it we go back over here we have oops under Y should not be under seven uh, X versus Y so they're narrowing it down to two or three opportunities and they want to make sure that the one they're buying is right for them and then finally reviews the last part is with your analytics you want to take a look at your click-through rate your average watch time your view duration time on page and how people are engaging with your content when you do that you can potentially make money with affiliate marketing now i'm going to mention it one more time if you are still with me i am launching an unemployee seven day challenge that challenge is going to be a more structured version of this there will be homework assignments there will be handouts that i give you for each one of these uh, days it will be a guided seven day challenge there also be some bonuses as well some some additional um, treats and, and things that will help you get up and running the goal of the seven day challenge is not to upsell you for other stuff the goal of the seven day challenge is to simply get you from uh, maybe hesitant to affi about affiliate marketing for something preventing you from getting started to having you take that next step to have you to actually take action and then if you want additional training after that that's when you can buy training a la carte um, i recommend that you go through the seven day training it's, it's just seven dollars um, but this will give you everything that you need to start making your first commission so start making your first sales um, really no stone is uncovered i will have additional training as i said um, additional courses but in reality if you follow through and you do the homework assignments and you take action you'll be in a much better position to start earning passive income guys if this video helped you out be sure to like subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when we upload a brand new video thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow